Godows is back with the NFL draft prospects that have stood out the most to me at this early stage. Of course, something we will revisit throughout the year. These prospects are certainly on the rise and certainly could be top picks, could be the best prospects in the future 2025 NFL draft. Let's take a look at the list. Obviously, we're going to put star receiver from Arizona, Tetsaroa McMillan, on this list after that 304-yard, four-touchdown performance, better than video game numbers. He caught our eye last year. He's going to continue to catch our, our eye all year long. Going to be super fun to watch. Obviously, should be a top-tier prospect, probably an elite receiver prospect that we already could pencil in going towards the top of the draft. You know, not only is he productive, a great receiver, but has a rare blend you know, of traits, is a rare type of receiver prospect. I, I think similar reasons why everyone loved Marvin Harrison Jr. so much, other than the fact that he was dominant and he's a son of a Hall of Famer. But Mc, McMillan has old school top tier receiver traits, you know, big body, physical, contested catch, incredible hands. But then today style top receivers where he's a separator, he finds ways to get open and just, and he's great after the catch continues, continues to make plays, trying to find a flaw in his game. You really can't do it. So I think because he has the old school traits, the new school traits, all of the above, I think coaches, scouts, GM's going to love him you know, any, you know, not just receivers, a, a prospect at any position that has a blend of the top traits, you know, from every era, I think anyone's going to fall in love with here. So, um, yeah, pretty much a lock to go towards the top could be the best receiver prospect in the draft. It's looking that way right now, but he has some competition. Definitely. We'll talk about some guys, but what, what, you know, for fun at this way too early stage, let's talk about potential fits. In my opinion, my favorite fits. It would be great. I think everyone could agree if Drake May got a, got a hold of the Patriots, got a hold of this guy for Drake May. You know, Patriots need a big time receiver. It's a type of guy that would fit Drake May, Mayball, we'll call it, you know, perfectly. Uh, and they should have a top pick. Another team that stands out, how about the New Orleans Saints? Should have somewhat of an early pick. They're a team that's not afraid to go up and, you know, trade up. It's a type of guy. I think they would do that. They are not the same since, the, you know, since missing. Michael Thomas, prime Michael Thomas, and, and going to get a big body guy that can make that level of impact could bring that team back possibly, but they could be looking for that quarterback of the future. But definitely a guy um, that has caught everyone's eye, you know, last year and so far at this early stage. I do think it's important. I, I think, you know, the guy showing out early, looking at the pass, pretty important, even though there's a long season left, but guys that just Without being fully prepared, fully in season shape, who just shows up and balls out is ball players, complete ball players. So it actually stands out to me, uh, even if it, if it's very early in the season. Next up, we got Ole Miss quarterback Jackson Dart, who I was a big fan of. If you watch us in the off season, you're not seeing his name in the first round a whole bunch. And not only I think he's a first round quarterback, I think he's in the conversation for quarterback one. Now he did just play Furman, but. He definitely looks the part, you know, looks smooth with his mechanics downfield underneath has the athletic ability to escape pressure. You know, a pass first guy with a great arm, great accuracy, but then second has that escape ability, that mobility as well. A very good athlete, but uh, love the poise. I love that he continues to get better at first. When he first came into Ole Miss, it's like we, they might have someone here, um, you know, makes mistakes here and there, but last year getting better and better as the year goes on. And then the Penn state game, the bowl game, he really stood out. He made NFL throws. And I do usually get a little worried with Lane Kiffin type system. It doesn't typically translate uh, to the NFL. That's why I didn't see it with Matt Corral. But Dart is a much different player. This feels like an NFL quarterback for sure that should co go towards the top. Could be a guy that teams view as a very high prospect, very good prospect. Maybe he has to sit you know, and learn the NFL system, I guess, depending on where he goes. Some NFL schemes trying to starting to look more like college systems. You know, they're starting to... It's looking more and more like it. Some teams starting to adapt there, but yeah, Dart looked insane. I know it was Furman, but he lo looked out of his mind. Uh, he was my Heisman pick going into the year too, and it was a little bold. So I'm liking that. Big fan of Jackson Dart even before this early portion of the season already. Um, so definitely one to watch, and should be more talked about in terms of the top quarterback but one of the top picks of the draft so excited to watch him this year another great quarterback prospect that has already stood out Quinn Ewers which seems like the the world is you know a little split on him some people think great prospect some people think maybe a little overrated 
I've been pretty high for a bit on yours, but really stood out in the first game, not because of stats. Of course, the stats look good. I don't care about them. Throw those away. Look at what he does on the field, getting better and better, but just reading coverages, moving defensive backs with his eyes, stuff you see Caleb Williams do from last year on tape when, when preparing for the 2024 NFL draft. So that is fantastic. And obviously has a big arm, uh, can make all the NFL throws. We see more and more of those difficult throws. So big fan of Quinn Ewers. Uh, I, I love nothing really rattles him to the poise. That's something we'll talk about with, with my favorite quarterbacks every year. And some of the guys in this video, that's something that stands out to me. I mean, I, I go back to his first start against Alabama, not last year when he beat Alabama the year before, the game that it felt like they probably would have won if he didn't get hurt. Nothing faced him. It felt like it was a veteran quarterback going out there playing against one of the best def defenses in college football. So nothing rattles him. Nothing gets to him. He's just a, he's just a ball player, you know, a very good quarterback with – with an inc with incredible arm talent that seems to be getting better and better. So another guy that is in the quarterback one conversation and should be picked towards the top of the draft. So excited to watch him continue to be more consistent, continuing to grow and be that NFL quarterback. We got a two for here. Two Miami Hurricanes after a insane performance against the Florida Gators. Miami looks to be back, hopefully at least. But their quarterback, Cam Ward, who was going to come out of the into the draft last year didn't get the greatest feedback I personally thought yeah maybe a third round pick highest second round pick but probably a third maybe in a fourth round pick and I believe he got that feedback and why he decided and he got that offer from Miami and what a great decision was to go back but a big thing with Cam Ward that is standing out right now uh, take away the numbers and the flashy play on the field which we, we can get into it's great but look where Miami was before Cam Ward I know it's really early but just, just look at the impact that he brings, how he can, one player can change a team, uh, you know, a school here. Uh, that says a lot, like you know, because in the past, I don't know how many years, they wouldn't have been able to do what they did in that game. They wouldn't have been able to do what, uh, what they did without Cam Ward. So uh, he has a big arm. He's just a big play guy. You know, he can make uh, people miss in the pocket. He can escape pressure. He can throw on the run. Very fearless. Love that as well. That's kind of the knock, though. Some of those, you know, gets a little carried away with the cross body throws on the run. Some NFL teams aren't going to love that. So this guy isn't a sure first-round pick, but he definitely is helping himself. I, I think just the presence, the presence aspect, him making teams better. We're going to see Washington State maybe take a drop without him and Miami taking a major boost because they have a playmaker that sets the tone at quarterback, and that is huge for teams that are just looking for a quarterback that helps them get better in the NFL, but kind of brings a winning and playmaking attitude. How about his receiver? That's probably not getting talked about enough. Xavier Restrepo, who I think is going to be a very, 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 very safe NFL draft pick. He is a very good slot receiver, and he's going to plug and play, start in the slot in the NFL, and he is going to make plays. The guy could get open, could run routes, very shifty, incredible hands. We've already seen that. Can make people miss. He's very tough, make people miss after the catch. I look at the – to me, you know, he's a guy that does more than just play the slot. He, you know, he's going to line up outside in college and in the NFL, but really feels like a firm slot receiver. He's going to play. He's going to be one of the top in terms of uh, percentage of snaps in the slot in the NFL once he gets his career going. And looking at those prospects, those type of prospects in the past, the guys that were mainly they're going to they can play outside, but they're strictly slot. They're firmly slot receivers. He's as good as, as it gets. Like he's as good as any of them. You know, I think a guy that stood out in this last draft that was there's a bunch of guys that can play inside. Like Malik Neighbors is like 50 50 playing in and out. So not talking about that type of player. I'm talking about guys that are firm. They are they're gonna make their money for sure in the slot. Like Roman Wilson stands out, who maybe maybe will view as a second round pick. Zero's gonna steal on him. Restrepo is better than him, like for sure. You know, so Kind of makes you think could be a very safe pick late in the first round. I, I think even though he's getting a little bit of love because he's a big-time ball player, was a big-time ball player, played a great game against the Gators. But we need to start talking about a little bit more. I mean, it's a dude. It's a guy that can play and is easily going to help an NFL team. So a couple of Miami Hurricanes that I get really excited about that definitely are on the rise and, and uh, 
you know, making a name for themselves in not just college football, but the NFL draft world. Another duo here, Shadur Sanders and Travis Hunter, quarterback receiver connection, but Hunter obviously a corner. Going into this year, it felt like Hunter was a better corner prospect than receiver prospect, and maybe you go not so fast after you see him play receiver against North Dakota State, which actually is a is a good ball club, which people don't really, you know, realize. Uh, but even though they're FCS, but yeah, Hunter could be a top pick as a receiver or a corner, just a big time playmaker, showing the improvement as a receiver, has the athleticism, has the incredible hands, has instincts, just very smart player. Uh, but uh, I, physicality is where he's a little underrated. And Sanders, uh, you know, a lot of people put him at QB1, first overall pick, and they're way too early mocks. And going into this year, I'm like, eh. But I did see a lot of good things. You're talking about poise again, toughness, fearless. Sanders is not rattled by pressure. He gets pressured a lot. Man, the, the, he will ta- he will stand in there and take hits and let the ball rip while he takes it. That's probably the, the, the thing that stands out the most, I'd say. Like, this guy will get blasted and he'll still make an on time accurate big time throw it's very very rare you know he can escape pressure he's really good with his legs but he is by far a pass first guy you know he's very athletic uh has an incredible arm down the field the velocity underneath the ball can make the nfl throws can throw on the run again the toughness not being rattled like if i see an open receiver i'm gonna get this ball out i don't care if i'm about to get hit the only knock is, yeah, sometimes he gets a little carried away with that. Maybe we could pick the awareness up. Sometimes the awareness looks great, but something maybe we can. It feels like we could pick the awareness up a little bit because, you know, maybe he won't get away with in the NFL throwing as he's taking these hits. I mean, I've never seen anything like it, really. I mean, how, how good these balls are while he's getting hit, but in the NFL, if he takes those hit as he throw as he throws the ball, maybe it won't be as pretty. So. You know, perfect world. I mean, it feels like he's getting the ball out pretty quick, though, given uh, the pressure that's getting after him. But, uh, yeah, really caught my eye. It already feels like he's taking a step up. So, two Colorado Buffaloes that could really go early and be the top picks in the NFL draft. And people seem to be split on them. The people love them. They love how explosive they are. And people hate Colorado. Yeah, the team definitely is a work in progress. But they have a great quarterback. They have great weapons at receiver and that's almost about it. So maybe not the best team in the world, but they they have some elite explosive playmakers here for sure that are deserving of going in the top of the NFL draft. How about Ashton Genty starting the year off against Georgia Southern? I'm just elite beyond elite uh, performance and showing that a running back should go in the first round perhaps. Man, the running back class is loaded. There are so many guys fighting for that one spot. So many guys. I, I mean, look at Ollie Gordon, Amari and Hampton. Ohio State's got a pair of guys, of course. Uh, I mean, there's a long list of really, really good running backs, but Genty in that conversation. Something we didn't really see enough of in the first game was pass-catching ability because I do think he has that true test against Oregon coming up, and that would be huge. But, uh, I mean, the vision, how shifty he is, the elusiveness, a home run hitting guy, like uh, everything you look for in today's NFL back. I'm a, I'm a big guy of like when you when you break down running backs, can they see the hole? Can they hit the goal, hole? What what kind of juice they got after? And he checks all those boxes. So very, very special player, and he's shown that last year and even more so this year. And I think his tape this year is going to look, you know, when it's predicting, when it's all said and done, it's going to look, look much better. And he could be a running back that goes first round. Talent-wise, absolutely, because the value of the position, maybe teams wait, but because a long list of worthy running backs are there, maybe teams wait as well. But just just a dynamic back that is extremely explosive, entertaining to watch. I mean, a highlight tape waiting to happen. For sure in Ashton Genty. So can't wait to watch him the rest of the year. We'll see if a running back goes first round this year. I'm really excited about that. Could have could have zero just because the value of the position, not because of the talent, but we or we could also have multiple. So it could be pretty crazy. Georgia safety Malachi Starks has to make the list. A loaded safety class, which we don't get too often in recent years. An absolutely loaded safety class. He is the star. A, a, a lockdown type safety that is also a big time playmaker. I mean, the ball tracking ability we've seen not just against Clemson, but throughout his career, it almost looks like a receiver. It's the guy that just knows where to go at the right time. The instincts, 
the tracking ability, the athleticism, the hands, I mean, everything. The ability to get downhill. You can line him up as a split in a split safety scheme. I, I believe he has the, the range really stands out. The range, the playmaking ability to play single high. I think he has the ability to play in the box, play, play strong safety. The best defenses in the NFL, especially down the stretch in the playoffs, Teams that are able to mix it up. All NFL defense coordinators really want to mix up coverages, give different looks, but not all can, not even close to all can, because do they have the players to be able to do that? And they're in the safeties that get paid right now can do that and they can play multiple different positions. Those guys, the value is skyrocketing while your typical safeties, even if they're very good, but they're just your, you know, they they play one spot and kind of are better at certain coverages. The value is actually dropping down, even if they're great players, but you have a, a special, special safety that can do different things and have has so many traits. I mean, it's not really a surprise. Georgia guys have traits. Um, you know, the only question is these Georgia defense is always so, so good that they all make each other look better. Um, and that's really not a huge take of mine when breaking down a prospect, you know, evaluation. But I guess we've seen it with Lewis Seen recently, even though he got badly injured his first year. So I guess that'll scare some people. I don't know if teams will really look at it like that. But uh, you got a rare, flashy type of safety prospect here that definitely um, definitely will go first round and could we get a safety going insanely high up in the draft top 10 again because how good he is, I definitely think it's possible. Nick Scorton of A&M was the Purdue pass rusher last year and was very productive. A&M brings him in against Notre Dame. Big game, biggest game of the week. Yeah, they, they fell short, but he was one of the best players on the field that I saw, actually. like He was a problem for Notre Dame's young offense line to block. He was a problem for their quarterback, Riley Leonard, getting his hands up. This another this will be the defensive uh, version of, of McMillan, how we talked about a rare blend, a rare type of player for today's NFL. We talked about how the top receivers used to look when we talked about Mc, McMillan and how they look now, and he has everything. The, to me, that that's, that's Scorton. I mean, he is your old school, in a way, your old school physical, long, bully defensive end that is that is gonna, just going to get pressure based off raw power but he has the explosiveness the 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 freak athleticism and length is becoming more and more of a problem the the great length you know all to fit today's era and you combine it all together teams coaches are going to especially those old school defensive coaches can be drooling you know they're going to they're going to be wanting scorting he's a lock to go early in the draft he's going to help in the run game going to get after the quarterback uh the only not really a knock, but I, I do think it's very, very, very likely 4-3 team looks for him playing defensive end. Don't really see him as an outside linebacker, uh, but some team's going to just be dying to have him. Like He is that physical freak specimen there, and I'm excited to watch him. And he, again, he was a problem in that first game, just a complete nightmare. Like we got to have to try to go away from this guy. He did go down. Uh, he did wear down and go down with an injury at one point, but... Um, to me, is a sure thing to be possibly the first defensive end drafted. Yeah, if we're going to split up edge rushers, defensive ends, outside linebackers, he will be the first defensive end drafted. I, I really believe that. So just a, just a game plan nightmare and a pre-snap nightmare. Like a guy you really have to – that just makes an impact by, by being there, the presence of him. So, I mean, those players go very high in the draft always. So excited to watch him this year as well. And speaking of that A&M Notre Dame game, how about Benjamin Morrison also? One of the, I think those two, you know, Scorton and Morrison, the best players that we saw on the field. We knew he was a lockdown corner that has some playing playmaking ability, but he took lockdown. He'll be locked down Marvin Harrison Jr. last year. Took it to another level when Notre Dame was doubted against A&M. Uh, but what really stood out, what, what's something new, I wanted to – Kind of get guys on the rise here. They don't show me that what we already know. They do a little bit better. Uh, what, what, what I love is Notre Dame put him where they needed him most. And we saw him play outside corner in the past. You use him on the side you need him most, you know, following Marvin Harrison Jr. last year for the most part. But seeing him get reps in the slot as well and running with guys deep downfield from the slot, that's very difficult. I think outside, like pure outside corners will tell you that. Some of them. Some of them think the slot is harder. Some guys in the, you know, maybe some guys think the outside's harder. But um, I, personally, I played corner growing up. Not of course, and I said this before. Not nowhere near at the, the level of the guys we always talk about on the channel. Uh, nowhere near the size. But uh, I always thought uh, in playing in the inside and covering short crossing routes was way harder than than even if playing against a speedy big guy on the outside. Uh, but everyone's a little different. But for him to be an outside corner and dominate that, be at an elite level, and slide inside and just dominate that, and just the fact that they put 
him where they need him most just shows how good he is. And I look at the corners in Teddy's NFL. That's happening more and more. I mean, Witherspoon's one that stood out. There's a couple guys that got drafted early this year that did the same thing. But you put those types of guys because they're able to play anywhere inside and out equally effectively you put them where you need them most and then boom you're a better you're a better defense so that really stood out to me just locked down Texas A&M, Texas A&M did not allow much and obviously should be an early pick uh, like we all expected there but Notre Dame Notre Dame's secondary might be them in Georgia maybe I mean they might have the best secondary in football so load of guys in there that that are very fun to watch and another corner an obvious one Will Johnson was an obvious top prospect but he actually, even even if he was number one prospect for a lot of people, which is very possible, he actually is on the rise. He got better. That's why I wanted this video, like not just put the obvious top prospects, put new guys that are looking good, but the top prospects, they can be in it if they're on the rise. I mean, he played good enough to, to highlight more than just one play. Like obviously I'm, what I'm trying to say is he played great all game, but we had stuff we knew. But if you, we got to highlight one play, the pick six, on the screen pass against Fresno State, the instincts. I don't think people realize how hard it is to intercept. Or I'd say that I go take a step back. It is very difficult for corners to make a play on a screen pass, defend it, stop it from even being caught. I mean, it might be. It's even we can take another step back. It's pretty difficult to stop the guy after he right after he caught it. I mean, usually it goes for some yards. I mean, usually the corner kind of. Their job is to push that ball carrier back in and somebody else makes the play. So you take it a step further, you make a play, you stop the screen pass from happening, you take another step forward for, for, for Will Johnson, you defend the play, and you take another step forward, you pick it off, and you return it for a touchdown. I, I mean, you have to know the play. You have to know the play. You have to have cr- crazy confidence, instincts, brains, which goes into that, uh, twitchiness, you know, expl- explosiveness, getting off the ball, getting off the snap, going and make the play and make the catch. I mean, it's it's a play we see in the NFL here and there. Whenever we see like a screen pass taken, uh, I go crazy over that because it's just it, it's just it, crazy instinctive, and it's just you can't coach it. You cannot coach that, and it's just I guess something we know that Will Johnson's one of the very best in football, and you know he could, you know he could be the. Uh, very first pick in the draft, uh, really at the cornerback position. There's a couple really good corners that could could go pretty early. Here's some more that I just wanted to highlight. A couple of Georgia Bulldogs, Carson Beck. Some people believe in the conversation uh, for quarterback one, and he played fairly well, especially in the second half. Uh, Jalen Walker from Georgia, I thought really stood out to me. I love the length, the explosiveness, just making big time plays. Jamal Haynes has been looking good. Georgia Tech running back, really good vision, really good. You know, quick quickness. Amari and Hampton, I love. Uh, violent, violent runner, but that it has today's athleticism as a running back as well. Jimmy Horn Jr., not just about uh, Travis Hunter. Jimmy Horn looks really like a really solid weapon. Could see him in those, you know, one of those NFL teams that really uh, convey, you know, speed, quickness, explosiveness. Isaiah Bond, I thought he was Alabama's best receiver, even though people said it was Burton, even though Burton was very good. Now he goes to Texas and looks really solid. The separate, the, the footwork, the separator that he is. Uh, really excited about him. Could be a first-round pick. Uh, Boston College edge rusher really stood out against uh, Florida State. Physical. Uh, really knows how to shed blocks. And Kevin Winston Jr. talk about a loaded safety group. There's more guys in this, but uh, the Penn State safety just really knows how to get downhill and make uh, big-time plays. So there you have it for the standout prospects so far. This is a video we can do you know, quite a few times, maybe more throughout the year, and see who continues to make the list. And that kind of keeps us... Uh, Gives us an idea who to watch for going into that draft season. But we have a we have a ton of NFL Week 1 content on the channel. We will have that for every single week. Check it out. Pick, score, predictions, a lot more. Go to, a chan- go to the channel. Check all that out. You will not regret it. Please like, subscribe, turn notifications on, and join us for all of our content. That's going to do it. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.